What's up YouTube? Today we're going to go over basic camera settings that you would have uh, if you are shooting sports photography. So if you are confused as to why your images are coming out of focus constantly, blurred, um, uh, really grainy, uh, anything like that, you just and you don't know why, you're trying to figure it out, you're just getting into sports photography, or maybe if you're just a, a mom on the sidelines or whatever, uh, and you're trying to figure out why the images are not coming out clear. Uh, this video is for you. There is a handful of reasons as to why that will be happening uh, and the main reason is usually your settings. Uh, if you are shooting in sports mode, uh, it has the icon with the little guy running on it. I think for Canon, uh, Nikon I'm sure has the same thing, but I don't know if they have the same exact logo, but they have something similar to that where it's sports action mode or whatever, or any auto mode. If you're shooting any of those, the first thing you do is not do that and I'll go over all that in detail in just a little bit so uh, what I'm going to do for this video is show you the back of this camera on the uh, back of the LCD screen and show all the settings uh, that you should typically have and these aren't going to be pinpoint dead on accurate all the lights are always different in different uh, situations uh, but it is just the basic settings that you should have and let's just jump right into it uh, and uh, go over those settings Okay, so on the back of our DSLR here, we've got our, um, our whole menu with our settings. Uh, now, I know every DSLR has a different layout. This is a Canon layout, obviously. This is the on the Canon 1DX, so it's a pro body. So it's the only similar body I know that looks just like this is the 5D Mark III, and I'm sure uh, like a 70D or any of the, the 6D possibly. Uh, they all look very similar. Uh, if you're an icon shooter, I apologize, but um, the terms I'll use, I'll try to keep it very similar to the same that Nikon has. So either way, we'll 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 try to cover both sides. So sorry about the glare too. I'll try to avoid it. Okay, so the first thing that you need to uh, ask yourself is look at your settings on the images. If you are on your computer and you right click on the image and go to get info or something like that, properties or whatever you should have a section that will tell you all the settings you had. And if you're shooting automatic mode, um, it'll, it'll still tell you. Um, and if you're shooting an event, like I said earlier, turn don't use any automatic modes. This camera doesn't have anything that's uh, auto aside from uh, TV and AV, but that's not fully automatic. Anything that's fully automatic, like sports mode and all that, don't do that. I can't count how many times I've had parents come up to me at sidelines and ask me, oh, my images are out of focus or they're blurry, but I'm shooting in sports mode. What's wrong? Well, that's the problem. You're shooting in sports mode and that's not good. Shoot in manual. And if you're not going to shoot in manual, shoot in AV mode or TV mode. Uh, I know Nikon has a different name. I apologize. I don't know the, the term for it. Um, but for, let's go here. For Canon, AV mode is where you set your aperture to let me go change it to whatever you want whatever the lowest you or whatever 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 your lens can go to whatever you want I'm always at 2.8 if it's daytime I might go to 3.2 3.5 4.0 just to get more in focus but still maintain bokeh if I'm using a zoom lens or a telephoto uh, so let's just put it there it does the shutter speed for it has a cap on it so I have to see how it's changing as I took the cap off and I move, I move it it's changing. So when you're shooting sports in AV mode, you set your aperture in ISO and then the shutter speed will take care of itself. And what you can do is use exposure compensation if your images, if it does this automatically for you, but your images are still too bright or too dark, you can go to the exposure compensation right here, this little thingy-majig, and you can move it over this way to make your photos come out brighter or you can go this way to make them expose darker automatically and just adjust it accordingly. Um, the only, uh, I would only suggest using AV mode or uh, TV mode if you're shooting outdoors and there's patches of uh, shade and sunlight because manually it's too difficult to continuously you know, change your shutter speed or ISO during a play or something, it's, it's too complicated. AV mode, it'll make your life a lot easier in that aspect. So if you're pro or uh, just starting out in sports photography, that's a good tip. Uh, some people that do pro stuff didn't even you know, think about doing that. I mean, I never did. And I, when I found out about it, I was like, oh, you know, that's really helpful. 
So back to the modes. So there's program AE. I don't even honestly know what that does. I, I have no idea. I never use it. AV mode, we just went over that. You set your aperture and ISO and the shutter speed will be taken care of automatically. And then shutter priority mode, TV for a Canon, uh, you set your shutter speed to what you want. God, there we go. And the aperture will take care of it. It's the opposite of AV. So AV is, for Canon, it's AV. It's for, called aperture priority. And TV is shutter priority. So you set your shutter speed, and then the aperture will do its own thing to you know, figure it out. It'll adjust it the same way as it's just not doing it now because I have the cap on and no lens attached. So I don't use TV mode personally. I mean, because I want to set my aperture and I put my ISO high enough to let the uh, make sure the shutter speed does not go below 1 800th of a second or maybe 640th. And that's the other thing we're going to go over right now um, after we go over um, manual. Manual obviously just means it's all you. Everything you do and the camera doesn't do anything except focus when you tell it to. Uh, so let's, so we, we can set our shutter speed to whatever we want, set our aperture to whatever we want, set our ISO to whatever we want, and it just stays that way. It doesn't adjust anything. So I shoot in manual mode when it's nighttime, if I'm indoors, because the lighting is uh, gonna be the same for the most part, unless they hit, like if you're shooting football and they go near the end zone, it gets darker. You will have to adjust uh, here and there. But for the most part, for outdoor nighttime stuff, it, the exposure, your settings are gonna be typically the same. Maybe one stop difference here and there. Um, so that's how all that works. Uh, and if you guys are watching this video, I, I am assuming you know what shutter speed is and uh, aperture is and RF stop and ISO. If you don't, there's other videos for that. I may make one in the future. But like I said in previous videos, this channel is just for people who are, you know, trying to take this very seriously. So I assume you guys already know this stuff. Um, so with, if you're wondering why your pictures are coming out of focus, it's your shutter speed. Your shutter speed is what controls how quickly the mirror on the camera goes down and back up. To, when it goes down, it's exposing the sensor to the image. And when it goes back up, it's done taking the picture. However, when you're taking pictures like that, if you put a really slow shutter speed, let's take the cap off. Take a really slow shutter speed down, okay? Let's take a picture and see how long it takes for the shut. You'll hear it. Listen to the sound of how long it takes for it to go down and up. Okay? And now the picture is pure white because it is such a slow shutter speed with such a low aperture. And now we'll put our shutter speed up really high and listen, in a split second, it just went down and up, and now our image is pitch black. So that's what that does, and what that means is the higher the number on the aperture, or the, not aperture, the shutter speed here, the higher the number is, the quicker the mirror goes down and up, which means it freezes something that's moving. That's how you freeze action. So if you're shooting sports and they're coming out blurred, this is probably your number one cause, is your shutter speed. If you put a really low number, and you take a picture down here, it doesn't sound that slow, but it is slow and it's, it's going to come out blurry. Your images are going to come out very blurry because there's movement in sports. Now, uh, another thing that the shutter speed does is you can see that when it was at a, sh a slower shutter speed here, it says, well, I don't know if you can see that. Sorry, it's really bright. It says 1 20th of a second up here. So the slower, the, the lower the number is on the shutter speed, the brighter the image is going to be. The darker the image, then uh, that means the, the, the higher the shutter speed, the darker the image. So it has its a pro and con. All three of these have a pro and con to it. So you need to make sure that your shutter speed is high enough to freeze action. What that number has to be, it's around 1 800th of a second, preferably. Um, I usually try to get 1,000th of a second at least. Um, and that it, it, it ensures that it will freeze the action. Now, this is where the issue comes in. If you are shooting with a variable aperture lens or a lens that is not 2.8, you're going to have issues. This is where the gear is very important. You need to have a lens that can go down to 2.8 aperture. 
that's your ap your aperture is what controls the bokeh, uh, the exposure, and all that stuff. I don't want to really go over all the, what what it all does. I'm trying to go over why your images are coming out blurry or dark or uh, grainy. We're going over all that. So, what does the 2.8 aperture lens do? That's the 4.0 lenses though, or the 3.5 to 5.6. A variable aperture uh, lens is something that goes from 3.5, and when you zoom in, it changes to 5.6. Those lenses are very, very difficult to use for sports. You can use them, but they're just, there's so many reasons that I would not suggest having those lenses. Um, it just, they're not, they're not good lenses for sports, honestly. Um, I, I've seen professionals that do use the like 70 to 300 or the, not that one. Uh, I don't know which one it is. It, it goes to 300, but there's one that goes from 100 to 400, but it has a variable aperture. And you know, the only time I see pros use those is if they're using strobes. Um, which in most cases people don't have that so the apertures that like a 70 200 millimeter 2.8 that le that lens when you're at 70 millimeters and you zoom all the way out to 200 millimeters it stays at 2.8 and that is really really crucial to have in sports photography especially when you're shooting at nighttime or daytime um if you're shooting all daytime games uh, and you're not trying to do this as a career or, or you're just doing it as a hobby, you can get away with a 4.0 lens or 5.6 lens if it's at the daytime. But you're still going to have some problems when they run into the shades. Your shutter speed is going to get really low. And you have to have a high ISO, which means your images are going to come out fuzzy and have that grain to them depending on the camera body you have. There's a lot of things. There's a lot of factors in, in it, and it's it, it gets really complex. But back to this uh, shutter speed. You need to have a shutter speed around... Uh, 800th of a second, 1,000th of a second, around there. You could get away maybe with 640th of a second, but just in that general area, you want to keep that. Now, why the aperture is so important to have a lens that can go down to 2.8 is so that you can keep an, a shutter speed that high because you'll find out soon when you go into manual mode at your next game and you're shooting with a lens that's 5.6 aperture or 4.0 aperture and you're trying to take pictures at 1,000th of a second, your pictures are going to be really, really dark and you're going to wonder why. The aperture controls how much light comes into the lens. The lower the number, the more light that comes in. And we went over this, the higher the number, the darker the image is going to be. And the lower the number, the more uh, bright the image is going to be. But when there's movement at a slow shutter speed, it's going to come out blurry. So you, have to, you can not probably realize now how there's so many things that you know, kind of balance it and make it all exposed properly and yet keep it sharp at the same time. So I hope that makes sense to you guys. If I'm confusing you, you can leave a comment, ask questions. but this number, these, all three of these go work together. And now we're gonna go into ISO. ISO is what, ma it makes your sensor more sensitive to light the higher it goes. However, when you go up higher, the con to it is that it gives you the grainier, fuzzier looking images, which everybody dislikes and does not want. So, this is your last resort. When you have these set up like this, and you've got your ISO, say, down to, 100 ISO and you've got this set over here. You've got the 2.8 aperture lens You've got the one thousandth of a second to freeze the action, but your images are still coming out dark and you're going okay I just bought a one thousand dollar lens or a twenty three hundred dollar lens or whatever lens you got I got a truly really expensive lens and I'm keeping the shutter speed that I've Researched on trying to keep why are they coming out dark? It's your ISO now your ISO has to be high up and every camera has a limitation on how it can go and every camera has a a uh, a uh, better uh, amount of handling the ISO, where that means as uh, like this camera body, Canon's 1DX or 5D Mark III, those are both amazing cameras that can handle low light situations very, very, very well and maintain an accurate uh, autofocus system. They're very, very good cameras. And so if you have a high ISO on these things, uh, say you're at 3200 or 6400 ISO, the grain is little to none. It is very difficult to even notice it. So you have to try to uh, invest in a good camera so that you can not have so much grain if you don't want that grain in there or you're trying to um, you know, get really just overall better image quality, you've got to invest in a better camera. So there's a lot of investment involved obviously, which is the downside to all of it. Part and of you just kind of have to deal with it and buy things as you go. And you know, if you're on a tight budget, just buy things one thing at a time. If I had to make a suggestion of what to buy first, whether it be a better camera body or a better lens, get a better lens. Get a 2.8 lens. I highly suggest a 70 to 200 millimeter 2.8. It doesn't have to be image stabilizer. It's up to you, if, depending on your budget. 
they're all great lenses. As long as it's a two-point aperture, then you should be fine and get better images that way. Uh, and the other thing after that would be a better camera body. Uh, depending on your budget, it all depends. Um, if you're shooting daytime stuff, you can get away with pretty much anything. If you're shooting nighttime stuff, it would have to probably be, uh, I would say, maybe a 5D Mark III or, I mean, a 1D Mark IV or a 1DX. Those are, like, all the best ones that I can suggest to you. Unfortunately, they're all really expensive. The 5D III is, like, 3500 1D Mark IV used is about, I think, 3K or 2800 or something like that. I could be wrong. And the 1DX uses, like... Uh, 45 to 5,000 and brand new 6,400 after tax 7,200. But if you have the budget, uh, but and you want for the 5D3 or 1D Mark IV, you didn't know which one to get for sports only, I would go with the 1D Mark IV personally because it's a pro body, it's got a, it's, it's just built like this. It has there's no battery grip you have to add on, and it, it just has a lot more uh, durability in opposed to the 5D Mark III. The 5D Mark III isn't really a sports camera, it's used for portraits and weddings, it can be used for sports. But I wouldn't suggest it. I mean, it, it's great and it'll work fine if you own it. There's no problem with that. But if you're trying to buy and look and you have to make a decision, I would go with the 1D Mark IV personally. Um, but that's just my personal preference. Uh, so that's pretty much it with how all this works with the exposures. And uh, I hope this helps you guys get better images. And if you if it answers your questions of wondering why your images are coming out blurry or uh, out of focus or they're really grainy, then to, that was the other thing with the ISO. If you're getting really grainy images and you've you got the exposure and it's all sharp, but you're wondering why are they so grainy? It's the camera body. I usually, uh, you know, sideline moms or dads or people who are just doing it as a hobby, they usually invest in like a Canon Rebel or a Nikon D7100 or whatever the entry level DSLR is for that side of Nikon. Um, and the issue with that is they cannot handle high ISOs. The camera body is what controls the, what handles the ISO. The lenses is what helps you get the exposed images and blurred background at 2.8. That's the other reason it's important to have a 2.8 lens as well, because if you see those pictures professionals are taking with the blurred background and you're wondering how they get that, it's because they have a 2.8 lens and they're zoomed out really far. The further, the more zoom you have on a lens and the lower the aperture is, or the f-stop, whatever you want to call it, the more bokeh you get in the background, which means there's no distractions from what you're trying to take a picture of. So if you want an isolated subject, or like say your son or someone you know is you're shooting an athlete and you want the blurred background to isolate them so there's no distractions, you've got to have a 2.8 aperture. Um, you could do it with, you know, like I said, 3.2, 3.5, 4.0. It, you could get a blurred background, but the 2.8 really does make that much of a difference and it's, it's way better. I, when I'm, like I said, when I shoot daytimes, I do uh, 4.0 on the 400 millimeter. But since it's such a large zoom, you still get that nice bokeh and you get the really nice blurred background. It just looks really nice. But that is just during daytime. And if it's nighttime, it's 2.8 is really, really crucial to have, you're, especially in high school lighting or indoor lighting at high schools. There is no way you're going to be able to shoot and get sharp, clean images with a lens that is not 2.8. Uh, there may be exceptions to that. There's some places that have better lighting in high schools than others, but I have, I have yet to bend to one uh, for high school where I can shoot at anything other than 2.8. I'm always at 2.8. So that's it for this video with uh, these basic settings, and uh, I hope it helps you guys out. So leave any comments in the video if you guys have any questions, or if I miss something, just throw it at me, and I'll be happy to answer you guys, and I'll see you next time.